Hey everyone, this is a video essay I did about two years ago on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. You guys probably know by now from watching this channel that Miles is a character that is really, really important to me. And so without further ado, enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. The recent Spider-Man No Way Home hype has made me look back at what I think is the best Spider-Man movie of all time. And I'm actually willing to take it a step further because I think Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is the best superhero movie of all time. And today, I'm going to be paying tribute to that work of art. But first, a little bit of backstory. As a kid, I love superheroes. I love the TV shows like Spider-Man from the 90s, Batman, X-Men, the video games, and in the early 2000s, we had Hollywood dip their toes into the water with superhero movies more heavily than they had ever before. And so my whole childhood, I wanted to read comic books so I could understand more about the characters I saw on TV, the big screen, or video games. But we never really had any comic book stores where I used to live. And as a kid, honestly, the world of comics is just so overwhelming, I wouldn't even know where to start. I had to settle for Marvel and DC Wiki to learn about my favorite heroes. Fast forward to 2013, and my friend gave me the first issue of Ultimate Comics Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I was hooked on Miles' story. It was the perfect introduction into the world of comics. Miles Morales was created at a time where Marvel was trying to reflect the diversity of our world by adding new superheroes or in some cases passing the baton of popular mantles onto new and familiar characters from marginalized groups. Falcon became Captain America, Jane Foster became Thor, and they introduced Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel. Miles took over being Spider-Man when Peter Parker of the Ultimate Universe was killed. Now, from a fan perspective, when you kill off one of the biggest pop culture icons, even if it's not the one everybody loves, and replace him with another Spider-Man, it pissed a lot of people off. Not to mention the racial discrimination the character would face for being half black and half Puerto Rican. Safe to say, Morales as a prominent character has not been accepted with open arms. But on the plus side of things, the Ultimate Comics were a spinoff in many ways. A lot of fans don't consider them the real Marvel comics. But with Miles' charm and relatability of the average person and great supporting cast, Miles would actually be the only thing keeping the Ultimate Comics alive. He was such a big hit that they actually ended up bringing him over to the main Marvel Universe. But for me, I of course wanted the people to know about him. In fact, most people until Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse had no idea of the character's existence. But I still wanted him to have his own movie, but with the right team that could do a story justice because the reality is, this could end horribly. The writers could easily disregard the character we've all come to love. They could play hard on stereotypes or they could fill up a cast of A-list actors to gain eyes and break the box office. Or fill it up with too many villains and heroes and give the story no way to flesh itself out. Fast forward to the first trailer of the movie and I had a lot of hope. You could see the storyline they would base the movie off of. The use of animation was great to see, but it didn't relax my anxiety completely. Then the next trailer came out, and I lost it. Looking at the trailer, the movie was starting to fit some typical issues. It seemed like they were just going for this classic kiddie animated movie to appeal to a younger audience. I saw the other spiders that they were introducing, and I was fuming mad and scared for what might happen. With Spider-Man Noir and Spider-Pig, it looked like it would be too goofy and silly. It gave me bad vibes. The idea this could shape Miles as a character because of moviegoers not taking him seriously or probably shutting down any chance of seeing him in movies or shows for the next decade or so, or even worse, change his character in the comics? Either way, it was Miles Morales' first movie. I had to see it. It was the most happy and most fulfilled I had ever been watching a movie.
I wanted to talk about more of the technical details of this movie. So let's get into how the movie looks. The animation in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is so unique and fits so perfectly. This movie's animation is a game changer. You probably notice a sort of stuttered look to the way everything moves when watching. That's because animator Joshua Beveridge is animating on twos, meaning characters are on screen for two frames. They still mix in ones like most animated movies for variety. The twos are usually used in more high stakes scenes. The ones are used to make the scene look smoother. This is usually when things are starting to look up for Miles. Other little things that really stand out is the way each spider looks, like they're each from a different art form. Danny Demian makes Spider-Ham look like a regular cartoon. He's very smooth, more lifelike. In fact, every spider outside of the main three has different animation styles. Maybe the best example is Penny Parker, whose looks resemble a manga comic book character and movements resemble an anime character. Into the Spider-Verse immerses you in a world just as if you were reading a comic book. It's almost like an illustration come to life. If you pause on a frame, it looks like a real comic book panel or a splash page. And clearly that's what Demian and Beveridge were going for. When we started the film, we really didn't know what we wanted the film to look like. We did know what our inspiration was. We all loved comic books. And we went back and we looked at, at comic books to see what was special about them. We fell in love with the half toning, the hatching, and the line work. We were really inspired by Jack Kirby's illustrations. He has the Kirby crackle or Kirby dots that he uses a lot. We'll see and, these dots as a motif through the entire movie. And a lot of the techniques or visuals that came from how the comic books were uh, printed. I think the point of animation or just the general look and feel of any film is to not overpower what's going on with the characters and the story. It's supposed to complement it and bring you into its world when you watch. The animation of Into the Spider-Verse adds so much to the story that we're following. These scenes could easily feel cluttered with too much going on, especially in scenes with a lot of action, but I never got that feeling. It's bright and colorful, loud and energetic, but it can also feel subdued and easy to understand. The skyscrapers of Manhattan with all their detail don't take away anything from the leap of faith scene. It actually helps you internalize how huge this moment is in Miles' character trajectory. For copyright reasons, I won't be able to use any of the music and I'll be honest, I don't have the greatest depth of knowledge when it comes to music or sound, but I'd be kicking myself if I didn't talk about the incredible sound of Into the Spider-Verse. A soundtrack and the sounds of the movie are supposed to set the tone. They're supposed to create impact and captivate you. And I can definitely say I felt captivated when I was in the theaters watching this movie. First off, every song in the soundtrack is awesome. The way this movie just sets the tone with its soundtrack, the way it pulls you, gives you hope. I think one of the greatest things was when I was in the theater watching the chase scenes of Prowler and Miles was honestly how scared and the adrenaline that kept pumping with those scenes. And a lot of that really has to do with the music just pulling you in. They did a great job with not just the groundbreaking visuals, but the incredibly mesmerizing sounds. Finally, we get to the story elements that make this movie so powerful. What's interesting is we see a very outgoing Miles, more similar to the recent Saladin Med comics versus the original Brian Michael Bendis comics. He's just a kid from Brooklyn, adapting to a new school completely out of his comfort zone. But like any young teenager, life is getting overwhelming especially with his father's expectations. Obviously, the addition of superpowers and other responsibilities don't help that. Like any coming-of-age story, the protagonist goes through some trials and tribulations. 
Jefferson is uncompromising in the way he wants Miles to go through life. He wants him to be dedicated to school and his studies with little room for anything else. His uncle Aaron fills that void. He's someone to look up to who has a cool and interesting lifestyle, someone to guide Miles, someone he can trust and bond with. Aaron is the only person to give this young boy an outlet for his creativity. As the movie goes on, he has a run-in with one of Kingpin's henchmen, the Prowler, who chases Miles down after witnessing the death of Spider-Man. Later, Miles finds out that this man who lives a life of crime was his uncle Aaron, and we can feel the betrayal Miles is experiencing. His role model was even worse than what his father warned him about. Not too long after, more chaos ensues. A life Miles had never asked for becomes a nightmare. His uncle chases him down again, and before he nearly kills him, Miles reveals himself. Aaron, of course, would never hurt his beloved nephew, so he puts him down and lets him get away. But in doing so, he loses his life. Relationships in this movie are so key because this moment becomes Miles' why. For greater context, let's contrast these with the comics. Miles becomes a superhero before he has that why moment. He's just a really good person who felt unnecessary guilt for the death of Peter Parker and a city that is in need of a hero. He's a caring person who wants to do the right thing versus into the Spider-Verse, he's really not sure if he wants to throw his whole life away and constantly put himself in danger as a kid who's barely even hit puberty. But he has a strong bond with his uncle, a bond through love and acceptance of the person he is and encouragement of the great man he can become. Aaron shows him that you can always be better, that you can always do the right thing. In the comics, you actually see Aaron being abusive. He pushes Miles to his limits and gets him to do things he doesn't want to do. You don't see that love return to Miles until much later. In the movies, we see an even softer side of Jefferson, a more understanding father who really just wanted the best for his son. He understands he's not a perfect parent, but he knows his boy is great and he loves him and just wants him to be happy versus the comics, where he actually rejects him and blames him for the death of his uncle and his mom. And look, neither is truly bad. It's great to have people like Miles from the comics that are good and just know right from wrong the moment they can crawl, and I love him for that. But as an audience, we don't just want our characters to be relatable. We want that, of course, but we want a step above that because what adds to that relatability is having a bond with them. We want to share in their experiences. We want to know their struggle. We want to know their hopes and dreams. And through all that, we want them to win that much more. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse blew me away because they were able to stay true to Miles Morales. And as a fan, that's important to me, but not just that they were able to take him and push him to new heights, to take him a step forward, to take all of the other characters in his story another step forward. And truly, they created a masterpiece.